What's up everybody? Welcome back. Two weeks ago, I sold my first property. Not as a realtor, but actually as an investor. I wanna talk about why I actually sold it, what I learned across the entire process, and then of course, what am I actually gonna be doing with the money? If this is your first time to the channel, then you wouldn't actually know that I do invest in real estate. I try to focus on multifamily properties. I've used my income that I have earned from my sales job over the years and continue to invest in real estate. My very first property was a single family home versus the multifamily duplex and triplexes that I'm now focused on. My very first property was bought in 2015 when I was living in Seattle and I decided it was time to finally sell this property. So the very first piece here is why I actually sold this property. And I think this piece can actually help for people that are maybe in their first home, their starter home, and also people that are investing. For me, I wanna to continue to invest. And like I said in the beginning of this video, not just on single family homes, I wanna get into the multifamily properties. So triplexes, triplexes, and duplexes. The reasoning behind that is that you basically have one mortgage for three different sources of income. If you have three different doors in a triplex, you have three different sources of rent for one mortgage versus a single family home where you have one house, one door, and then of course, one source of income for one mortgage. While the cash flow is nice, what that also does is mitigate the risk. If you have one door that doesn't have a tenant in there, you have two other doors actually paying your mortgage. So that's one of the first reasons I wanted to actually sell the property is just to be able to pull the income and the appreciation out of it and go purchase a multifamily property. So continue to invest in the way that I want to invest and not just on that single family property. The other reason I decided to sell it was also because the appreciation in a certain sense had essentially capped in that area and then also the rent was staying pretty stagnant as well. It was over by a university in the area and I decided it was time to take what I had earned out of that place. I originally put $45,000 into it and it had appreciated quite a bit. I originally bought the property at $220,000 and I sold the property at $280,000. Now, since this was my first property that I have actually sold out of my portfolio, there were quite a bit of things that I picked up and learned. One thing that I didn't necessarily learn, but one thing I do want to mention in this video, especially because this was my first property and taxes aren't necessarily something that everybody wants to talk about and selling a home isn't something that people run into often you will be taxed for selling your home. And so what I did prior to actually even listing this or even going down this road was I sent over my information to my CPA. I had a conversation with him and I figured out exactly what my cost basis was going to be and how much I was going to have to pay in taxes at the end of the year based on selling this property. Because not everybody uses a CPA and some people actually do use TurboTax, I'm gonna go ahead and post a link, I believe it's for Smart Asset, that'll actually have a tax calculator so you can kind of figure out what you might actually be paying on tax at the end of the year. I always recommend a CPA because I'm not an accountant and it just makes a lot of sense to have somebody else that's actually paid to do that work do that for you, especially if you're dealing with some more complicated stuff like the investors that might actually be watching. So onto the things that we actually learned selling this first property. While I was really familiar with the idea of commission for your realtor and for the broker and a couple of the other fees, I was actually pretty shocked by the actual line item breakdown for what were the different fees to some of this stuff for actually selling a property. Just to give you an idea, there are title charges, there are recording and transfer charges, there are prorations and adjustments, there are county taxes, and of course payoffs or any kind of utilities. So looking at the actual breakdown kind of surprised me in terms of what extra other fees I was gonna be paying outside of just taking a certain percentage and saying this is what I'm gonna walk away with at the end of this closing. Which leads to the second thing. While not all things are actually negotiable, in your closing process, such as the actual state deed taxes, the doc stamps on there, you can negotiate other things. One thing that I actually brought down, and it was because I have been using the same realtor and property manager for a very long time, is the actual commission piece. So typically it's about 6% of what the property actually closes at, and that's split two ways between both realtors, both the person bringing the buyer and the person bringing over the seller. The seller is the one that actually pays that commission out of that property. I got to lower my commission take on my realtor that worked with me 
Again, because I have worked with them before. So if you're selling a house right now, it's worth it to have that conversation. And of course you could take it to the next level and just sell and buy your own property. So this for sale by owner, you got a whole different process you can deal with that. So the other thing that I really picked up on and paid attention to was the actual tactics for the buyer. And I might be thinking about it a little different because I do invest in property, but I think this is really important for those of you that are buying a property for the first time or selling a property for the first time because this is how certain people are going to be thinking. And just to give you an example here, we had an offer that was a little higher than what the list price was, and then we had one that was right on list and another one that was just a little lower. While just looking at the numbers alone, a lot of people would probably take that highest offer, but you gotta take a look a couple of steps down the line. What that higher offer could have been was maybe an investor that wants to win the actual offer, get in and do an appraisal and realize that there's a couple of things wrong with the property and then of course beat the seller up on price. And then what essentially happened is that I would have sold the price lower than the other two offers. So thinking about what's actually going to happen post appraisal might help you sell the property to somebody that is trying to actually truly offer the amount that's listed there and not play any kind of games. And this is a little bit of a bonus piece here, but while I do pay attention to that, this is where a really good realtor comes into play too. If your realtor knows the area, if your realtor has worked with other investors, this is where you can pick their brain and really ask them questions prior to even selling this property to understand if they're a really good partner for you to sell this property. If they know the area, if they know these kind of tactics, they can get in front of it as well and guide you in terms of picking the right kind of offer on your property. Another thing that really stands out, and this was just watching the properties and the other properties that I have as well, while the rents did go up, it was nothing astronomical. Where the real value is found and how I get to invest this into another property is going to be the actual appreciation of the property. One of the biggest things that ties to that, and I did talk about it in other videos, is picking the right area, picking a property that doesn't require too much work, at least for me, a little more of a turnkey property. The last piece that I really learned because this was my first time selling a property is you gotta reach out to your homeowner's insurance and actually capture the cash while you are definitely going to get that back sometimes, and this is talking to the title and the realtors, it doesn't necessarily come right back to you. So make sure to reach out to your property insurance carrier and get that, let them know that you've actually closed on the property and you do not have it anymore so that you can receive that back via a check. So the last part here is what I actually did with the return on this property and what I actually earned from this property. In 2015, I actually purchased the property, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video. It was a conventional loan, so I only put about 20% down. And so I ended up selling it this year, 2019, for $280,000, which I believe it was listed at 282 or 83. After all fees, it was about $94,000 back in the bank. Now about 80% of that's going back into the real estate fund to purchase another property to take care of a couple of other properties and just handle the portfolio. So a thing I want to bring up there is that although I had put in a certain amount of money, you are investing here to continue investing. You're not taking this out to buy a new car even though I really like a new car. While you might not have $45,000 or $44,000 to put down in a property, there are other ways to get into a property, which I talk about in other videos. And the idea here is to see how money actually grows in a property. So you can actually put money down on a property, watch it appreciate, pull it out and continue to keep doing that. So it is really accessible if you can just put a little bit of money away. So what's next with the money from this property? While I'm actually gonna be talking about what I actually spent the money on in another video, my plan right now with the 80% of the income towards the real estate side is going to be either doing some kind of joint venture, getting into the commercial side or another multifamily property. So one of the hardest parts to get into the commercial space is actually show that you've done a deal. It's kind of like getting a job. They say you need job experience, but they won't give you a job. It's the same idea with lenders on commercial deals. And so one of the easier ways to get around that and show that you've done a commercial deal and actually had some income from it is actually get into a joint venture with a smaller amount of money. So I'm currently working with a few people on figuring out how to get into one of those. 
or if I find the right deal in this area right now for a multifamily property, I'm gonna go ahead and move into that one out of this property. Like I mentioned, I will be talking about what I actually spent the money on. I also did promise in my last video I will be talking about what I actually keep in my flight bag, which for a newer pilot is gonna be very different from somebody that's flying commercial or somebody that is a CFI, an actual flight instructor. So definitely come back for those. I hope you guys really like this video, especially for those of you that are maybe looking to sell your first property, a first time home buyer even, to look out for some of the tactics that I had mentioned earlier. And then even those that are actually investing and in selling your first property. This was a learning experience for me. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and press subscribe and then hit the notification bell next door. And please do me a favor and like the video. Hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend. See ya.